Welcome back everybody to Welcome with the People's Republic of China. We are of course trying to continue and build this incredible army guys into something worthwhile. Um, and somebody actually came up with a really good point and that is that we need to build some tanks. The problem is that we uh, currently only have the Great War tank. Clearly not the greatest thing in our arsenal. But I think it is important to start building it. I'm actually going to move its priority way above everything else besides our um, actual rifles, which we always need. I mean, we're always in need of rifles, but I would love to get a Great War tank um, up right now. It is being stockpiled, and we also have a chance to modify our government. So Minister of Education, Head Teacher, this would actually lower our research time. The proletariat would lower our factory output, which is all, or increase our factory output, which is also really good. But I think I'm going to go for Chen Yi, the head teacher. Our people come from a time um, of rule by the emperor where they really just lacked an education, and I think it's important for them to get educated as quickly as possible. So let's go ahead and do that. We also have a chance of bringing people into um, our, our improving relations and then making them our friends so that, you know, maybe they can help us in the future. Um, the problem, one problem is joining the common turn. We do not have the ability to ask people to join our faction. I believe only the faction leader has that ability. But no matter, it's not, it doesn't really matter to me, um, because we're probably going to be trying to conquer a lot of these places anyway, even the places that are communist. Um, I do believe that Mongolia is not in the, uh, in the actual uh, Soviet uh, faction or the Comintern faction, which despite them having a, a communist government, makes it very possible that we could start a war with them and actually take over Mongolia, which would be really, really great. Um, so let's go ahead and get back to the regular map mode. Why the hell can we get rid of this map mode? There we go. Back to norm normalcy. Um, but we are going to continue to try and stockpile and build our army. Obviously, getting some tanks out would be awesome. Um, it would be incredible. But I'm not sure it's going to be that easy. And as you can see, um, as our army increases, so does our need for rifles. So we're going to need to go ahead and try and build more rifles. Uh, as you can see, Type 88. Oh, wait. This is what we already have? Isn't this what we already have? I believe it is. Never mind. We might not need to stockpile that many rifles. Um, Use for reinforcements. Type 88. Yeah, I think we're good on rifles, but obviously we probably always need a few more. Uh, why the hell not, anyway? And I uh, also want to take a look here at production. So that Great War tank is all we can build right now. That's obviously going to end soon, and we'll probably have some better options, but that's the situation right now. Um, it also looks like the Soviets are also getting there on the border with Manchuria, so I hope that they're also considering a war uh, with Manchuria, if possible. Uh, let's also make sure that these guys... A lot of these guys are out of supply, but that's probably because they're doing training. And obviously with training, um, you know, that's that's definitely going to cause some issues. So Nationalist Spain won, unfortunately. Uh, we did get our dispersed industry, though, and that's definitely a plus. I want to keep increasing that industry, that industry. And it looks like Amelia Earhart has disappeared. And actually, for those of you that are interested in Amelia Earhart, um, fairly recently they found uh, what they think to be her remains on, um, on an actual island, um, a deserted island. Um, so it, there was a chance that she actually managed to survive for quite a while um, on that deserted island without being killed, etc. Here we go. Well, she died uh, ultimately of disease. But anyway, Patong criticizes German hegemony. In an enraged speech from the French fascist party under leader Philippe Pétain at the Place de Palace de la République, the German government came under heavy criticism. Pétain claimed that the German government is able to do whatever they want and that Germany is able to pursue its own interests at the expense of other countries. Further, he demanded the containment of the German lust of power before the German empire gets too strong. The speech of Philippe Pétain increased the tensions between Paris and Berlin. Just a few months ago, the German emperor Wilhelm III got displeased by a governmental system from the Parti so it is interesting how, you know, now that France is the one that lost World War II, uh, World War One, excuse me, it's looking like they're becoming the fascists, whereas the Germans are remaining pretty much monarchists in this case, really nothing too radical. Um, and that definitely leads us to believe what could happen here. I, I'm not sure. Now, I'm going to stop training for this army because I am considering a possibility of going to war with Vietnam very soon here, taking the Vietnamese out before the French have a chance to ca capitalize and try to take this area for themselves and obviously it would add a very very large um group of uh of production to our our entire country so socialist science has been 
finished. We got that third research ability, which is going to be really great. Um, and I'm thinking we still want to keep working on some tanks. So we maybe want to go for the Type 34 Da. Maybe some the armored car would also be pretty helpful, um, especially if we're going to be taking over areas. So let's go ahead and uh, Type 34... Yeah, let's go for the Type 34. Um, it's got a few abilities here that I... Let me take a look at those. So it's got um, Light Tank Destroyer, but we do need to uh, basically get that... Finish the project before we get those technologies. And I'm thinking we probably don't want to go to war until we get a tank. Call me crazy, but I'm thinking that that's probably a very important part of the war. So here we go. We can try and and try and um, increase the Chinese Empire. This was a, this would of course give us claims on quite a lot of places. We could give an ultimatum to Mongolia and an ultimatum to Tibet. I mean, this could really increase our empire. At the same time, we should be focusing on an economical ep effort uh, and try to keep getting the building slots, getting the military factories. So I think I'm going to keep expanding that. However, over here, we could go to Industrial Society. No, not yet, unfortunately. Um, we're going to have to wait a little bit before we get to Industrialized Society. We need more than 120 factories before we get there. So expanding industry is also probably something to consider. But I think right now I'm going to expand the arms industry. And if you guys think that we should go for that reunification of the Chinese Empire, I want you to put that in the comments down below because that would be a major push. It would piss off a lot of neighboring countries. But we could potentially be taking over a huge part of the land here. Um, which I think could really, really help. Now, there we go. Our artillery gun is done. Now we can start focusing on artillery. Uh, we could also increase the usefulness of our artillery. So let me go ahead and get to the production screen. And once again, something else we're going to need to build, and that's going to be artillery for sure. So, 75 millimeter. Um, I'm actually going to move it up once again. Even past the interwar fighters. We actually already have a factory for them. Oh, was that? Sorry, guys. Move the convoy ship up. Nonetheless, we still need convoy ships, don't we? So, no, I don't want to put it on top of the Great War tank, but we won't build too many factories for it. Just got a few here. And uh, we'll get rid of the factories for infantry. Maybe we'll get one more. Because um, we're probably going to want to increase our army even more. But nonetheless, I really want to focus on getting those new factories. So let me actually go to construction, and we're going to drop a few military factories over here around the country. Hopefully they get built quickly because we need these factories desperately. No divisions in basic training? Well, right now I don't really want to actually um, do any basic training because, quite frankly, that, uh, you know, it's just not something we need uh, right now in terms of uh, divisions. We need tank divisions, not infantry divisions. Now, this is creepy. Italy has joined the League of Factories. So now Italy and France have their own faction, I believe. Yes, they do. The League of Fascists. Ligue des Fascists. Um, this, could co this could definitely lead to a world war down the line, and uh, we want to be as, as careful as possible to avoid it. Um, but obviously, we want to probably start our own wars here uh, and try to take over some of these countries. So let's go ahead and actually head to Manchuria. Foreign claims. So the Japanese still have a claim on Manchuria. Um, and it looks like over here, the Republic of Laos and Siam have a claim on Vietnam. I couldn't care less. I'm actually going to try to justify a war goal uh, for conquest against them. So, probably the northern provinces, uh, Tonkin province, would be where we're going for. So, I'm going to send a claim for Tonkin province. Although, I could try to get um, all of the claims, which would cost us 96 political power. We've got that. We can deal with 96 political power. But we definitely have to be prepared to possibly go to war with Vietnam. It would be our first war, and it would certainly, you know, sort of be our version of the attack on Finland by the Soviet Union, in the sense that we may not do so well um, attacking this area. You know, we may actually fail miserably, but we want to try. We definitely want to try and attack and see how our war plan goes. Um, and I hope you guys can help me, because last time, um, you know, my war plan was not perfect. And it actually ended up kind of hurting us because um, we weren't prepared for the invasion. So, let me just see here really quickly. Offensive line. I want to try and just draw this offensive line right now. And uh, I think we can add our army to it. I hope it's already added. But basically our men will be training for that offensive uh, for years to come. Uh, decades to come, whatever you want to say. So let's take a look here. 
want to make sure that these guys are all committed to that. Control click to assign units to this order. Okay. So I no, no. So there we go. So I believe that they are assigned to the order. I'm not sure. I can't find out, and uh, all the vets here of Hearts of Iron Four can let me know how this is done. But I believe by doing that, they start to prepare for the invasion. Uh, I could be totally wrong on that. And now, of course, we got another national focus to focus on. So we could fund steel production. We could expand industry. I think all of these things are good ideas. Or we could go straight to our claims on reuniting the Chinese Empire. I think we're probably going to do that. We're going to go ahead. I know you guys probably haven't put that in the comments down below yet, but yeah, that's definitely something we want to go for so that the people know that this is definitely something we're considering. We might even go for Tibet first. Um, in fact, let me take a look at this army. So, interesting. Uh, I'm going to add two divisions here. And I'm also going to begin our plans for invasion. So we're going to select all of these men. And we're going to also get rid of the training. They've trained more than enough. In fact, they're quite well trained. And we're going to put an offensive line over here into Tibet. Hopefully, we just want to take Lhasa. Uh, but we will control click to assign our units to that invasion order. And I hope this is the correct way of doing it. If it's not, please do let me know in the comments down below. Really do want to have the best situation possible. Uh, we could also apparently go ahead and invest in another political minister. Uh, let's take a look here, or even a military high command, army logistics. This will actually lower our division attrition. And uh, the division recovery rate is also great. So I think I'm going to go for the army regrouping expert. <clears throat> We're really starting to build um, our communist government here into something quite strong, quite um, menacing, as it were. But pretty soon, I do want to get on the warpath and start attacking people. We can actually see that the world attention is at 17%. So things are already pretty creepy around the world, to be honest with you. Um, and I'm hoping that, sh that Tibet doesn't have any allies. We want to get rid of the Jempo Yesha Gyatsen and go ahead and take over this area as quickly as possible. So here we go. We can keep improving things. Uh, I think I'm going to go for improved machine tools. Obviously, we want to get those factories up and running, and we want to put as many factories as possible to really turn into a truly industrialized nation. Over here, we also have a fighter, which we could reassign. I don't believe we have any air bases near Tibet. Um, so that's probably something to consider. Sorry about that, guys. Um, probably something to consider is getting some air bases near Tibet, but for now, we'll probably just drop them over here at Shandong Province. Um, it's probably good enough for now. It shouldn't be there. Ah, we'll create a new air wing. Fair enough. Okay. So, we've reunited the Japanese Empire. Now, this is creepy. We've just received an ultimatum from Tokyo. Japan wants that we see Shanghai. We will refuse this demand, of course. I hope this doesn't lead to a war with Japan, but who knows? Um, it certainly could. Let's go ahead and take a look here, and it looks like that is definitely a very creepy situation. I'm hoping that if they declare war on us, um, and there we go. The uh, People's Republic of China has called the Soviets as our ally in the Japanese-China War. So they are definitely going to war with us at this point. Uh, I'm taking a look to see if Manchuria is involved in this war. I don't believe they are, but let's just make sure. Nope, it's going to be Japan alone. All we have is this tiny group of um, ships, uh, cruisers, etc., and I'm hoping that this is going to be sufficient to put some pressure on the Japanese. But starting a war this early on in the game is pretty creepy. Um, and obviously uh, not something that I'm looking forward to. So it looks like the Japanese have started their invasion of the Soviets over here. Um, that's terrifying, of course. I hope the Soviet Union can hold out against Japanese attacks. But of course, we're going to do our best to help. And I think the best thing we can do to help right now is just go ahead and try to get into battles with the Japanese ships. Um, that definitely changes a lot of things. Let's go ahead, while that's occurring, we want to go ahead, get a national focus. Army training, division training time would lower, construction speed. I mean, this looks pretty awesome. Construction engineering, we're going to go for that. And uh, let's get more research. Yeah, we definitely want to focus on f increasing our research. So we'll go for electronic engineering. It's only 18 days uh, to focus on it. It's definitely something we probably should have done before. And let's do excavation as well. 
Now, this is incredible that Japan has started this early on um, with a war. It really kind of annoys me. Um, and we're not in any position to attack. So I'm going to see if Manchuria will let us pass through. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let's see if we can improve relations. Um, yeah, we could also boost our party popularity. So I'm going to try to improve relations with Manchuria. Uh, because we want to see if they can let us pass our troops through their areas. At the same time, this could work out in our favor if the Soviets are able to counteract. Um, the Soviets are definitely part of this war, so obviously if they're able to counteract uh, these uh, Japanese claims for supremacy, then uh, hopefully we can, we can bring a s swift end to this war. Um, nonetheless, Japan attacking us is a serious provocation, and they definitely have more divisions than we do by far. Um, so I'm trying to see here, I think I'm going to go for convoy raiding, try to hurt the enemy's convoys as much as possible, um, and damage their ability to try and push through uh, this part of the world. Um, nonetheless, that's something to keep an eye on. This could be the end. Um, I want your guys' opinion. Should we start taking over places like Vietnam? Should we start a war with Tibet and take over Tibet? What do we do in this situation? I don't think we have enough for an invasion force, but really, I'll let you guys decide. You probably know more than I do um, in this particular situation. And as you can see, we're already in a fight with the far superior Japanese fleet. I don't think we're going to come out of this with a victory, but at least we're doing something to try and assist our friends uh, in terms of a war effort. I don't even think that our our uh, fighters could help here. Although I guess we could send our fighters over here to uh, to Korea and try and help the enemy out. And now it's all Manchuria. That's interesting. Um, but we definitely want to consider maybe going to war with Manchuria. Who knows? At this point, uh, this is going to be pretty crazy. So there we go. Unread naval battle. And we actually got a victory. Wow. Praise be to the Soviets. Um, we actually managed to defeat the enemy. And I think it's only with the assistance of the Soviet ships that we beat them, but we took down four enemy destroyers, and uh, they were actually sunk by Hairong, so uh, we actually managed to sink them ourselves, which is pretty awesome. Um, so our first battle against the uh, Japanese was a victory. Of course, it was just a tiny naval battle, but I want I want you guys to let me, let me know what to do now. Um, how should I approach this situation? Should we start invading places and start taking land? What do we do? Um, at this point, I'm just hoping that the Soviets can help us out big time and really defeat the uh, the Japanese. One thing I hate about this situation is the naval invasion uh, in this particular game, in my opinion, is really messed up. And invading this area uh, navally is going to take us a long, long time and possibly fail miserably. But maybe we should invade Korea. Nonetheless, this war is not going to end until we take Tokyo. So this war might be going on forever. We might have a 20-year war on our hands or a 30-year war on our hands. I don't want to have to focus on it, but the fact is we do have to focus on it one way or another. So we can see here that the Japanese have lost 36. The Soviets have lost 26 or excuse me, 2,000 units uh, to the enemy's 36. Nonetheless, the war continues. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure to give me some comments down below. I need them, and have an awesome, awesome day.